Help support the companies that support our community. This is a piece of Texas ebony. So this was a cut off from a project I did a while ago. I'm gonna go ahead and use a bull gouge and get it trued up. So Robin asked me to make her an eyeglass holder to put on the nightstand. So that's what I'm doing. This piece was pretty cracked up, but I figured out a way to mount it on a lathe where the one end it wasn't cracked up that much. So and I'm gonna bring the other end down quite a bit. So I'm just kind of getting it through. This is super hard wood, it is crazy. So you'll see me in the video switch back and forth between the carbide and the, the gouge because it just, it, it's almost tougher to turn the sap wood than it is the heartwood on this. It's really just kind of, there's a lot of dust with it. But I went ahead and put a tenon down on one end and then just started shaping it. I made the base pretty big because I wanted that contrast between the sapwood and the heartwood. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous wood. It is a little difficult to turn just from being so hard, but it is beautiful once you put the oil on it. So I made the base big and then brought it down the center. And this piece had a bunch of big cracks in it. It's just kind of been sitting there after that project because I wasn't sure what to do with it. So by bringing that spindle down in the center there, it actually worked out perfect for this project. I got rid of all of those cracks and just turned them away. The wood is so hard, it almost looked like I already put the finish on it before I even started sanding it. When I did put the oil on it, it just really pops. And again, I used the Howard's beeswax. This stuff really makes it pop. Went ahead and got that done and then put it on the carving stand and carved out a little notch in the top of it. So I would, I had a couple little flaws in the top of it, so I made the lot notch a little bit bigger than it needed to be, but went ahead and went down so the glasses sit in there nice and tight and ran through all the grits on that and put some more oil on it.
About halfway through the project, I started thinking, why did I put a tenon on it instead of a recess? So I had to take it over to the oscillating sander, sand off most of it, and then back to the lathe and sand it off the rest of it with the sanding pad. So there it is. I'm just so used to putting tenons on things. I didn't even think about it before I started. So if you're gonna make one of these, use a recess. It will save you a lot of work. I had to use the oscillating sander and grind down basically with 80 grit the tenon on it because there's once you cut that groove in it there's no way to get the tenon off of it so put a recess on it well there it is it is five inches around or five inches diameter on the on the base and five inches tall and another thing too I had some defects on the top of it, so I had to cut this groove pretty big, but you don't have to cut it that big. Even something like a half an inch dowel or probably not even, probably three eighths inch dowel on a piece with a piece of sandpaper, just something small like that, you know, cut it out a little bit and then sand it with the with the dowel. It would have worked great, but it will work good. <laughs> Robin loves the wood, so she's always waking up in the morning, reaching for the glass, and they're falling down on the on their face. So this will hold them up. So we're gonna put that on the nightstand. Yeah, it's this is just a beautiful, beautiful wood. The contrast in it is so amazing. And I had this piece, and there were some really deep cracks in it. So I was just kind of like I didn't know what to do with it because they were pretty bad. But bringing it down, down like that took care of all of them just had one little little crack on the base so it all worked out all right i hope you enjoyed the video um we'll have another one up next week and i hope everybody has a great weekend all right you guys take care we'll see you soon bye